All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. Today we are going to talk about turmeric or curcumin. This is a uh, plant chemical substance that has been used in Ayurvedic medicine, medicine for centuries. It is probably one of the most used substances. So uh, let's talk about this. I remember my old times, my younger times when our mother used to use a turmeric, we used to call it haldi in our uh, language Urdu. And she would pu put haldi on everything. If we are bruised because we were playing and we have a uh, inflammation or bruise somewhere or a wo wound somewhere, she'll put the turmeric with oil on it. And I remember I used to become so upset because it would leave a yellowish stain on the skin. And she would just tie, uh, she'll just bind it on the on the wound every day that I used to run around and, and say, I don't want the turmeric or haldi on my uh, wound. And she would do that. Uh, similarly, this has been a substance that has been, uh, this is part of the uh, curry masala as well. The, that yellowish color is actually the turmeric's color. So it is very, very much used in, in food on regular basis. And then it is also used for medicinal purposes as well. And that is what we are going to look at. So let us start our discussion. I am venturing into Ayurvedic medicine over here. I am an allopathic doctor. So if I leave something out or if I miss something, please put that as a comment instead of calling that, hey, uh, the sky has fallen. Just add that in the comment and that would add value to the others who are watching and then reading. Uh, so with this, let's start. Yes, absolutely. So there is Nebu already saying that drink with milk. Um, and there is there are lots of good things. So let's start. And let me quickly show you the links as well that are in the description. So first of all, what are phytochemicals? Phyto means a plant. So phytochemicals are actually chemical substances that are released by the plants. So that is turmeric is a phytochemical because it is a chemical substance from a plant. Then uh, this is what turmeric is, the plant of the turmeric. This is turmeric plant. This is how it looks like. And there's a decent article here. Then curcumin, which is actually a derivative from um, the uh, turmeric. And so here is a decent article. This is not a study. This is an article 2020 July uh, where the authors have indicated that there is a possible role of turmeric for or curcumin for COVID-19, and I'll discuss that. Then there is the mechanism of action, which is anti-inflammatory. Uh, curcumin is supposed to be anti, um, uh, anti-tumorogenic, anti-inflammatory, anti-pyretic, um, uh, anti-pain, and there are so many other uh, uh, uses for this. So this is especially, and today's discussion is special, especially going to be about anti-inflammation or an anti-inflammatory part of it. Then there is another decent uh, article here. The mechanism of action of uh, curcumin is through this, uh, supposedly through this enzyme or this protein, and we're going to talk about that, PPAR gamma protein. People who may be diabetics, they may already know that what is PPAR gamma. And if you are a healthcare professional, you know that the zolidines are the drugs for diabetes that use PPAR gamma protein as their mechanism of action. And then this is a detailed uh, article about the curcumin, an age old anti-inflammatory and anti-neoplastic agent. So they have collected data from many, many studies and put that over here. So if you are interested in, in reading more about curcumin, I would recommend that this is a good article. So having said that, now we know what is here in the links. Let's start. So curcumin is a phytochemical. So plant chemical, phyto means a plant. So here for your reading and viewing pleasure, I have made a plant, a tree, which is playing Kung Fu. And what it is doing is it uses curcumin like substances or phytochemicals are for the plants to thwart their competitors, their predators, and their pathogens, or the pathogens coming to them. And the phytochemicals or the chemical substances given by the plants can be used, uh, uh, can be poisonous to us or can be therapeutic to us. We know that, for example, poison IV and other, and there are many poisonous substances from the plant that can kill us. But at the same time, there are uh, therapeutic agents as well. So with this, before I continue, I want to show 
what is the letter to the editor that I showed you? Where, what were these authors saying? So that the COVID-19 relationship becomes evident right in the beginning, potential relationship. And then if you like, you can stick around to understand the mechanism of curcumin and the other uses for it. But if you are just interested in seeing that, how does it help for COVID-19, then here is that screen and then you can uh, have fun. Okay, so possible therapeutic effects are, number one, they say that curcumin can bind the receptor binding domain of the viral spike protein. So we have done the, these discussions many times that let's say this is our cell and on the cell, we have the ACE2 enzyme. On this ACE2 enzyme, the spike protein from the virus. So let's say this is the virus and these are various spike proteins with it. Right, so this is an angry virus. So these spike proteins, these spike proteins, these are binding with ACE2, correct? We have done this discussion. This is an age old part we have discussed. Curcumin is a phytochemical that has an affinity both for the spike protein and for the ACE2 enzyme. So what they say is that when you give curcumin, that is gonna go and bind the ACE2 enzyme and kind of block it from the action of the virus or the binding of the spike protein. Similarly, curcumin is also supposed to bind with the spike protein itself and so just like antibodies, when it is bound to the spike protein, the spike protein cannot connect with the ACE2 enzyme. And so that reduces the viral binding to, the end, to a cell and the entry in there. So that is one mechanism that they have shown. The second mechanism, and I'll go in detail later on about this one, immunomodulatory mechanism, where curcumin is supposed to uh, change the immune system's behavior or regulate the immune system behavior. And we have been using it in the Ayurvedic medicine in the South Asia. Curcumin or haldi is used a lot for many, many of the uh, diseases. And I'll discuss those as well. So immunomodulatory mechanism is known for ages. Then for, again, for COVID-19, they propose that curcumin also downregulates from animal studies. It is known that curcumin downregulates the production or the expression of ACE enzyme, not ACE2, but ACE enzyme. And you know that ACE enzyme is necessary for angiotensin 1, angiotensin 1 to be converted to angiotensin 2. Correct? That is where the ACE enzyme comes in. Angiotensin 2 is the one that then participates in the inflammatory problems because the, the ACE2 enzyme is now being used by the virus. And so angiotensin 1 to 7 is not being converted, which angiotensin 1 to 7 is anti-inflammatory. Angiotensin 2 is pro-inflammatory. So now the pro-inflammatory part of our body becomes more with SARS-CoV-2 and the anti-inflammatory part goes down. So if we have curcumin, that kind of blocks this part as well, the ACE enzyme, it down regulates it. And that causes the angiotensin II production to reduce, which is anti-inflammatory. Secondly, angiotensin II then acts on a receptor, which is called AT1 receptor. Curcumin is supposed to down regulate the AT1 receptor as well. So not only the production of angiotensin II is reduced, but the action of angiotensin II on its receptor is reduced as well. So all of those mechanisms are the proposed mechanisms through which curcumin can help COVID-19 patients. Now, <coughs> excuse me. So now this is the curcumin and this is the connection to the COVID-19. If you wanna look at the remaining mechanisms and other potential uses, then please stay along with me and let's talk. So first starting with the plant from which the curcumin is derived. That plant is the, we call it turmeric or haldi. Its root is used in food. And normally it is crushed and dried in that yellowish thing in the uh, Indian Pakistani curry, even Nepal and other countries, that, that yellowish color of the curry comes from the curcumin. The plant root is called curcuma longa lin, or, and it is a ginger family plant. It is a dietary spice. 
which is very, very commonly used. It is supposed to be anti-inflammatory and I can vouch for it, for it because my mother had been binding it on all the wounds I ever had in my younger time. I used to get so annoyed and upset with haldi on my wounds and then anti-cancer. Curcumin is a diferolyl methane. It is C12H20O6 formula. It is relatively insoluble in water. So most of the time when it is applied topically, it is usually mixed with oil. And when it is taken orally, usually it is mixed, either it is in the food or it is mixed with milk. So it is insoluble in water, soluble in ethanol or other lipid um, substances. And so that includes milk as well. Curcumin's basic mechanism of action that we are going to talk about today is that it causes the upregulation of PPA or gamma proteins inside the cells, which will in turn help cell defend itself. So that is the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant activity of curcumin. So now let's see in Ayurvedic medicine, how is this used? It is given orally and topically in oral like with milk or it is in the food. Topically, it is usually mixed with oil or some other substances and then pasted on the skin for the joints that are uh, aching or the bruises or, or the wounds and so on. It is a very common home remedy as I'm, I'm protesting again and again that my mother would bind it everywhere I'll get any kind of a inflammation or a wound. So that is one home remedy. Second, it is used for hepatic disorders. And I know this as well because uh, my family, we come from Lahore and my mother's family used to live in Lahore for 400 years. And she used to say that in her family, the tradition was my, my mother was a teacher. So she used to say that her, in her family, the tradition was that whenever there will be children, the eldest child will become someone who would uh, participate in religious affairs. And the younger to that person, that child or the younger child will become a Hakim or uh, a doctor of the Ayurvedic medicine. So when I uh, was rise, uh, when I was being raised, we used to have so many books at home that were handwritten with the various plants and their effects and their side effects, which our ancestors used to use for the Ayurvedic medicine. And I used to be fascinated by those uh, books. And my mother used to tell that grandfather and his father and whoever, they used to go to the jungles and they would find plants and then they would come back and use them and research on them and stuff like that. So. Uh, <clears throat> It has been used for hepatic disorders, anorexia, cough, sinusitis, rheumatoid arthritis. This is a very common one. Aching joints or aching places used to have the paste of curcumin applied to them. Diabetic wounds have the curcumin applied to them as well. Then slaked lime with turmeric is used on bruises. So I used to have oil with turmeric on bruises, but slaked lime is used as well. And then milk plus turmeric has been taken for fever, aches, and after delivery as well by women to recover fast and have less pain. And of course, it is part of our foods as well. Now, mechanism of action and dose. So again, I'm only going to focus on the anti-inflammatory mechanism of action, not anti-neoplastic or the anti-cancer mechanisms. Uh, so what happens is it is an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory and anti-neoplastic. The antioxidant behavior is interesting that at the pH of 3 to 7, so 7.3 is about our normal pH, so slightly lower pH, it is turmeric is a great H atom don donor. At the pH which is greater than 8, which is alkaline pH, it is a great electron donor. So it behaves variously, but it is an antioxidant in this way. The dose that has been used in various cancer studies, 3.6 gram per day has been used effectively for colorectal cancer. And it is said that Indian population, in the Indian population, the reduced incidence of colorectal cancer is because of the use of regular use of turmeric. 
turmeric is part of every almost every curry that is made nepal in nepal there is a study epidemiological study that, that was done and they found that over there people eat or take 1500 mg of turmeric daily with their food and in india 2000 to 2500 mg of turmeric per person per day is used now wound healing mechanism so what is it that when my mother used to bind turmeric on my wounds what would happen inside so they have done the studies that when the turmeric is applied on a wound what happens in the wound is that turmeric causes chemotaxis of neutrophils so more neutrophils appear in the wound and their number increases similarly more macrophages appear in that area as well so we have a we are fortunate we cool beans here that we've been talking about the immune system for a long time so you know that these two cells are part of the innate immune system so innate arm of the immune system is upregulated in the wound when turmeric is applied secondly fibroblasts number increase fibroblasts are important because they do is these are cells that would come in the area of wound and they'll start making collagen and fibronectin fibrin which would then help create granulation tissue or healing tissue so whenever turmeric is applied on a wound the fibroblasts increase the granulation tissue increases and the healing is fast and better because it blocks the infection as well through the uh, innate arms upregulation so it's a more rapid and neat uh, wound healing then on the cytokine modulation on the immune system when the turmeric was given so what they did was most of these studies are done on animal models so what they do is that they are going to expose an animal let's say to some sort of an injury that would cause their liver damage or immune system dysregulation but before they do it they treat the animal with turmeric and then they uh, experiment on the animal and then they see what kind of uh, immune responses are seen so they saw that in the pre treated pre treated with turmeric or curcumin in the animals pre treated with curcumin and then uh, uh, taken through an experiment of uh, some sort of a damage to their body the uh, this is an unfortunate thing i i love animals so i feel bad when i talk about it anyways the liver enzymes in those animals are reduced normally when there is damage to the body and the immune system is upregulated and there is Uh, sepsis or there is a shock in the body liver starts getting damaged so they saw that the turmeric actually helps keep liver protected number 1 number 2 interleukin 1 production is reduced interleukin 2 production is reduced interleukin 6 production is reduced and 10 and we know that in the uh, innate arm of the immune system we have seen that these guys when they are produced in higher quantities they can cause immune system amplification and dysregulation so this is how turmeric is liver protective plus immune system dysregulation protective continuing on now what is the basic mechanism how does it do this protection so what we saw was this the basic study is that they have done animal sepsis study what does that mean they take a few groups of rats and what they do is they some rats are controlled rats so they are not going to um be affected or they are not given turmeric and they are not passed through the experiment then there are two more groups of rats one group of rat is given hemorrhage and shock and sepsis experiment where the rat is bled or injured and then the shock sets in and then sepsis set, sets in and then another uh, group of rats are first given turmeric then they are bled or injured as well and then the sepsis is they're given a challenge of pathogens and then we see how their body responds so the interesting thing was that those rats that were passing through the sepsis experiment but they were not given um, turmeric their body increased the inflammatory markers that means their body responded with immune dysregulation with 2 to 3 times more inflammatory markers com- compared to controlled however when turmeric was given and the rats were passed through the same experiment of hemorrhage shock and sepsis events the rats immune system 
behaved almost equally uh, in the cytokine markers, meaning the cytokine markers produced in these rats were almost equal to the control rats, that means uninjured rats, which means their body did not create extra inflammatory markers and the sepsis did not exaggerate. So this was a study to see that turmeric pretreatment can reduce inflammation and the chances of sepsis. Sepsis is the um, uh, infection which is throughout the body. It is systemic infection then which causes the septic shock which we see in COVID-19 patients. So that means if I extrapolate that to us with COVID-19, again, I cannot say this is deterministically possible, but if I extrapolate it, then what they're saying is that if some people are taking turmeric daily, then they are pre-treated with curcumin. And whenever they would get an infection, the chances of that infection running away to become sepsis or become a septic shock or become immune dysregulated outcome, the, these chances are lower. And I wanted to show you, I actually have, um, I use this turmeric strength whole body. So we have that. And my wife uses um, this turmeric paint. I don't know if I can uh, show it correctly. She uses this whenever uh, she... So this is for removing skin blemishes or skin irritation and is used. Plus it is used... It is kind of a turmeric oil. It is also used for uh, any uh, pain in joints. So this is the uh, experiment for the sepsis. And how does this experiment, how does this happen? What does turmeric do or curcumin do? So if you focus here for a second on this cell, what happens is that inside a cell, all of our cells, we have a protein produced, which is called PPAR gamma. PPAR gamma protein, here I'm showing it in blue. When this connects with its promoter, promoter are, uh, so imagine in our DNA, there are various genes. When those genes will open up, they will produce various messenger RNAs. Those will further produce proteins. Those proteins will function in our cells and cell would do something. So imagine that we want to make a car. So to make a car, we need a template for the car. So that is the gene. But somebody has to open up that template and activate that template to make the car. So the promoter regions in the DNA are kind of doors or the stimulation areas where if you stimulate them, then they would open the gene next to them and allow that gene to be transcripted and then translated into a protein. PPAR gamma works with certain genes opens them up or helps them open up. And then these genes help make messenger RNA. Those messenger RNAs are then translated into proteins. Those proteins will do some function and that is how the cell activates. It is found out that turmeric activates the PPAR gamma protein. It activates a gene that makes the PPAR gamma protein. PPAR gamma protein in turn activates a gene that would make other proteins which do the function. One such function is in diabetes. When the diabetics take PPAR gamma uh, stimulants, for example, very commonly zolodines, like thiozolodines for diabetic, diabetes, these drugs will activate the PPAR gamma or will produce more PPAR gamma, which in turn would cause more of the gene regulation, which would then cause more insulin, uh, less, more insulin sensitivity or less insulin resistance. So that is how the thiozolidine diones help with the diabetes. Turmeric has a very similar behavior. It also works through the PPAR gamma. This is why turmeric has been used or curcumin has been used in diabetes as well. And that is why it is used on diabetic foot where the diabetic wounds are used. So it is applied topically over there. So this is the mechanism of action. So how does this work? Now, for example, let's say there is going to be sepsis. Somebody is infected, let's say, with COVID-19. What happens is in sepsis, it is observed that PPAR gamma production inside the cells reduce almost by 50%. That means cells ability to defend itself will reduce. 
So when the PPAR gamma production is reduced, that reduces the PPAR gamma. When PPAR gamma is reduced, then the stimulation for PPARE is reduced, which causes less response from the cell, which in turn causes inflammation and damage. So now continuing on, how does turmeric or curcumin help the immune system? Number one, so these are studies. These are not theories. These are studies. Most of them are animal studies, but these studies are there. Number one, curcumin helps modulate NK cells behavior. And that is really important because NK cells are responsible for uh, connecting with the other cells that are infected and killing them. Secondly, it optimizes the dendritic cell behavior. And we know that dendritic cells are very important innate arm cells. They would eat up the coronavirus and they would activate the adaptive arm, the, this cells, the naive T cells. So dendritic cell behavior is modulated by a turmeric or curcumin. Similarly, macrophages uh, behavior is also modulated or uh, regulated by curcumin. And same behavior that macrophage would interact with the naive T cell and then naive T cell will go this path or this path, depending upon the kind of uh, interleukin present. Interleukin 4 to, for T helper 2 path, interleukin 12 for T helper 1 path, correct? So we, we've talked about this. Another very important factor is the neutrophil modulation. Neutrophil are also part of the innate arm. And neutrophil's extra activity causes severe sepsis and extra infection and extra debris formation, extra damage. Not extra infection, but extra damage of the tissue. So when curcumin is administered, the neutrophil chemotaxis is reduced. This is very much like a lironlimab type mechanism. Remember, we saw over there that lironlimab reduces the chemotaxis of new cells to come in. This is not just neutrophil, but B cells and T cells as well. Curcumin does that for neutrophils. It reduces the chemotaxis of the neutrophil, that is one. Number two, it increases apoptosis in neutrophils. So even if the neutrophils arrive at the site of infection and they are going to become dysregulated and they're going to become overactive, curcumin would encourage them to kill themselves, not become too mad and do not cause too much harm. And they, this is seen to be positively useful during sepsis. And then the neutrophil, we have done this discussion in one of our past topics that inside the neutrophil, they have burners and those burners have myeloperoxidase enzyme in them. And we put the pathogen in those burners and then we burn the pathogen with bleach. So for that process, there is an enzyme called myeloperoxidase that is used and the uh, curcumin downregulates that process. So causes less activity of the neutrophil. So this is another. <laughs> so I see a comment here. I'm now hungry for Indian food. So uh, this is the this is one more action of the curcumin. So this is the discussion. I uh, it is interesting for me to talk about Ayurvedic medicine, but interestingly, I have been exposed to this medicine to an annoying degree. And as I can tell, as I can show, I have them here as well. And of course, some of our foods have them on daily basis too. So there are, uh, I remember that when my, when my mother used to apply it to our wounds, the pain subside right away and, and the wounds would not become infected and then they would heal. So as much as we used to become upset about it, that was a common uh, medicine. So this is what we have for today. Uh, we'll continue our discussion tomorrow. If you want to support this work, there is a, uh, there's a link for uh, donations in the description. And then please like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you very much.